People love crossovers. That's what people buy nowadays in the United States, and it's no different for electric vehicles. So let me tell you about 10 electric crossovers uh, that are the most popular, and uh, maybe you can decide uh, whether or not you want to buy one and uh, which one specifically. And I'm not just going to tell you about them. I'm going to give you pros and cons for each. Before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Energy Pal. Are you thinking about going solar but not sure what panels to get, whether or not to get a home battery, or how much all of this is going to cost? Well, Energy Pal will do all of that for you and you will get a $500 gift card when your installation is complete if you use the link in the description of this video. All right, let's start with number one. And this is not just the most uh, popular electric crossover. This is the most popular, the most sold electric vehicle in the world. Well, let's be honest. If you're thinking about getting a Tesla Model Y, you probably saw one of your friends or neighbors drive one, watched one of the million of videos on YouTube from Tesla fans about how great it is, or Elon Musk told you to. I have some bad news for you. Uh, all of those are pretty much the worst possible sources to base your big decision on. Uh, this is one of those things you kind of have to weigh the pros against the cons, against your wallet. Can't help you with the wallet part, except for, of course, buy low, sell high, don't get married, you know, the huge. But what I can do is what most of the Tesla YouTubers can't, and that is to give you the balanced list of pros and cons of the Model Y so you can decide for yourself. All right, so let's do five pairs of each pros and cons. And we're going to start with one of the biggest pros that Tesla has always been pretty much the best at, which is the range. How fast can the EV go on one charge since charging your EV on a long trip is not as easy or fast as filling up your gas car with gas. Even with over 100 different EV models out there from all other manufacturers, Tesla Model Y's shortest range option is higher than most of those 100 EVs highest range options at 279 EPA rated miles. The longest range you can get the Model Y with is 330 EPA rated miles. Now, let's move on to the first con of owning a Tesla Model Y, and it is the range. I know, I know, you are probably jumping out of your chair screaming, Alex, you got it all mixed up. You just told us that the range is one of the pros. How could it be also a con? Well, Elon Musk has actually invented how to do that. Now, the reason the range is also a con is because Tesla's EPA range is almost always higher than the actual real-world range, so the car is almost always lying to you about how many miles you have left in your battery. When Edmunds tested a bunch of EVs to compare their EPA range to a real-world range, Tesla was not only one of the few brands where every single model has underperformed, but has done so by as much as almost 20%. I should mention that when I had the Tesla Model S, three of them actually, many times when it was dark, cold, and windy, I would lose as much as 40% from the EPA range. Let's move on to the second pro of owning the Tesla Model Y, and it is always high on every Tesla owner's list, and it is the supercharger network. You can fast charge your Tesla at one of thousands of locations, and it is a quick and easy experience, which you can't say about other networks. However, in a recent deal with major manufacturers in the US, Tesla has decided to open up their network to other brands and allow them to make their cars with the same charging port, thus nullifying what most Tesla owners have always considered as their biggest advantage. But until that happens, the supercharger network will stay on the top of the pro list. 
Moving on. So this is a deal breaker for me in any car. And Tesla is the only major US manufacturer that just doesn't have it. I'm talking about the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It is just not there. And unlike Twitter's blue check mark, you can't just pay Elon Musk to have it. I don't know how about you, but when I get into my car, I want my entire universe to be connected to it immediately. The addresses where I'm going, my calendar, phone numbers, apps, voice assistant, my Tinder matches, everything. I honestly don't know why anybody wouldn't. And you can only do that with one of those two plugins. The pro number three, and it is the autopilot and the full self-driving package. And I know all the Tesla fans are on their feet again yelling at the screen, Alex. But you have repeatedly, repeatedly said, and as a matter of fact, you just made yet another video about how the Tesla's full self-driving package is a scam. It is true. It is a scam. If you sell it as a full self-driving package while lying about what it is and what it will become, you know, self-driving, while charging $15,000 for it, claiming it is an appreciating asset. So it is a scam, unless they have accidentally misspelled fool and then, then it actually makes sense. But if you look at it as an advanced driver assistance system, it is by far the best. The con number three is pretty much the reason why I left Tesla brand after becoming one of the first Tesla Model S customers back in 2012 and then buying two more Teslas and it is their shitty, shitty, shitty customer service. And it's not even a secret. Tesla owners have been frustrated with it for years and Tesla has just decided to do nothing about it. Complaints range from little to no return contact. Yes, they will literally ghost you like a Tinder date. Poor quality and expensive repairs and long wait times, which of course drive insurance costs up. Tesla also doesn't have enough of qualified shops to repair their cars with a shortage of parts and a poor part distribution system. Back to the pros and at number four is Tesla's security and surveillance system. It utilizes the cameras built into its body all around and it serves two purposes at once. One is to record everything that happens once you're driving, like a set of dash cams. I have always preached that the first thing after buying a brand new car you absolutely must install is a dash cam. The only drawback here is that none of them record sound. And once you leave the car, it becomes your security surveillance system that will continue recording any activity around the car, send you a notification with a live feed if something is wrong, and warn those around the car that it is not a good idea to mess with the Tesla. Now, another con that I personally see as a deal breaker is a complete absence of the instrument cluster or even a head-up display. Elon Musk said it's because these cars will dry themselves very soon and there will be no need for it. Funny he left the steering wheel in there, but the real reason for skipping it was that Tesla simply wanted to save money and fatten up their profit margins. So all Model Y drivers have to look away from the main direction of the road to the center screen to find that information, which of course doesn't make things safer. And that's why Amazon and other online stores are full of Model Y instrument panel and head-up display add-ons. Now, the last pro I'm going to mention is the performance. Now, electric cars have always had a much better torque and the fastest 0 to 60 cars in the world are now all electric. The Model Y performance version does 0 to 60 in just 3.5 seconds, which is one of the fastest in its class. As a matter of fact, only the Kia EV6 GT can do better and only by 0.1 seconds. And the very last con of the Model Y that I'm going to mention is the door handles. Tesla does love to invent and reinvent things. Most of the time it is industry changing, but when Tesla has tried to reinvent door handles to get better aerodynamics to preserve the range, it was a dud. 
Not only it is an awkward two-step process of pushing and pulling, Tesla appears not to have bothered to test it when it's either really hot or really cold outside. When it's hot, the door handles do get so hot that sometimes they will burn your hands, and when it's freezing cold, they get frozen in so that you can't actually open the door. Much like with the instrument panel and a few other common features that Tesla has screwed up in the Model Y, this has once again prompted the aftermarket to offer the solution. All right, moving on to number two, and this is actually one of my favorites. The Mustang Mach-E starts at around $43,000 in the US, but prices for electric cars change all the time, so be aware of that. It is also a looker, as far as I'm concerned, and comes in a few gorgeous colors. It's been on sale for almost three years, so it is now a pretty solid EV. Over 20,000 of them were sold so far this year. Let's get to the Pro number one, and it is one of the most important specs of any electric car, which is the range. The top EPA range of the Mustang Mach-E is over 300 miles. There are some EVs that still have a range of closer to 100 miles, but the majority of them are in 200s now, with a few crossing the 300 mile threshold, and the Mustang Mach-E is one of them. Now, in order to get any range out of an electric car, you would have to, as your grandpa calls it, refuel it. Uh, but we now just say, charge it. And that's where we come to the first con of the Mustang Mach-E. It is the DC fast charging rate. It is just 115 kilowatts at its max for the base model and 150 kilowatts for the extended range models. And even if we take the higher of the two, the 150 kilowatts, charging the Mustang Mach-E from 10 to 80% takes 45 minutes. Now that's not good. It's definitely not a Mustang when it comes to charging, but more of a donkey. That's its top speed. Now, if you compare it to its biggest rival, the Tesla Model Y, with similar range, the Model Y can charge from 0 to 80% in just 15 minutes. Back to the Pro column, at number 2, we have the 0 to 60 performance. The GT version of the Mustang Mach-E does 0 to 60 in just 3.8 seconds. Now, that's more Mustang-like. It's only other electric crossover rivals that can go faster are the Kia EV6 GT at 3.4 seconds and, of course, the Tesla Model Y performance at 3.5. Here's the con number two, and it is the range upgrade price. See, the base price of the Mustang Mach-E is actually on par with the rest of its rivals. It starts at around $45,000 before the tax credit. But if you want to get an extended range, which is an extra 53 miles, you'll have to pay $7,000 for that. Way more than the competition offers for a similar upgrade. For example, Tesla charges less than $3,000 for almost an identical range upgrade in the Model Y of 51 miles. The Pro number 3 is something that people love about electric cars, which is the frunk. Because electric cars don't have an engine up front, leaving all the space for us. The front trunk. The frunk. You get it. But not only the Mustang Mach-E has a pretty spacious one, it also has a drain, so it can be used as a cooler for the tailgate parties. Now, the last con number three is the fact that even though the Mustang Mach-E qualifies for the US tax credit, even though not all buyers are, it only qualifies for half of the $7,500 allowed due to the components of its battery not being made in the US. At number three, we got the, the Volkswagen ID.4. And if you've watched my channel before, you know I have a love-hate relationship with this one, but nevertheless, I will be fair. The ID.4 is a winner of many awards from NHTSA and IIHS to Motor Week and Car and Driver, including the 2021 World Car of the Year title. The EPA range spans from 209 to 275 miles, depending on the trim, and the 0 to 60 time is 5.7 seconds. It also is, in my opinion, one of the better looking crossovers out there from all angles. 
Let's start with the pro number one and anybody who loves a bargain will love the ID Force price. Including the destination fee, it starts at around 40 grand and is qualified for the $7,500 tax credit in the US. So if you are qualified as a buyer, your starting price goes down closer to 30 grand. If you're not qualified, well, there is a loophole to still get the $7,500 discount through a lease. You're welcome. There are only two other electric crossovers that start lower than the ID4, and they are the Hyundai Kona EV and the Chevy Bolt. Con number one is the reason why I returned my ID4 one year early, and I have made numerous videos about the issues that I've had with it. By going public with these issues, I have forfeited tens of thousands of dollars in potential sponsorship money from Volkswagen, as they were sponsors of this channel channel at some point. All of my issues have come down to Volkswagen software and the fact that the first software update was not made available until a year and a half into my ownership and yet, when finally installed, solved very few of them. From issues with Bluetooth and the phone connections all the way to car shutting down and needing urgent repairs on multiple occasions. My Volkswagen ID4 owner community on Facebook with over 20,000 members has also confirmed confirmed through a poll that I was not the only one with these type of issues and yet Volkswagen has abandoned all of us. To be fair, it does appear that the newer models don't have as many of the issues that I have experienced. All right, before I'll need my high blood pressure medication, uh, reliving those wonderful memories, let's move on to the pro number two, and that is the free unlimited fast charging at the Electrify America. It is definitely a perk I have enjoyed the hell out of. Each session, however, is now limited to 30 minutes. Even though you get three years of free charging at Electrify America with your ID4, when you actually get there to the charger, you realize how slow your car actually charges. With max rate of just 170 kilowatts, the ID4 charges from 10 to 80% in as long as 36 minutes. The pro number three is not something that can be measured with numbers, but anyone who has ever ridden in the ID4 can definitely vouch for the excellent and smooth ride quality. The car is built well, the noise isolation is great, and so is the vibration control. It's like you're driving in butter. Smooth. And the last con number three is the fact that even though there is no engine up front, the ID4 does not have the frunk, the front trunk. Most other EVs do, and a lot of people love it. All right, now we are up to number four, and this is a pretty good one. The Ioniq 5 is one of the few all-electric crossovers that can actually compete with the Tesla Model Y, the most sold car in the world, and can do so successfully. Plus, people love its retro look. All of that is why it's won multiple awards from major outlets like the Car and Driver, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kelly Blue Book, World Car Awards, plus too many more to mention. The Ioniq 5 is relatively fast with the most powerful trim going 0 to 60 in just 4.4 seconds and the price starts at just a little over $40,000. Over 70,000 sold so far in counting, so let's talk about the Hyundai Ioniq 5 biggest pros and cons and we'll start with the pro number one, which is one of the most important specs of any EV, the range. The Ioniq 5 has over 300 of EPA rated miles for its top range. You know, there are not that many EVs out there with that type of range right now, which is not only good for the peace of mind, but also for the future resale value. Now, the first con of the Ioniq 5 is honestly puzzling. It's like if your smartphone still had a rotary dial. What? You, you have two zeros in your phone number? Yeah, we can be friends. All jokes aside, the Ioniq 5 does not have a wireless connection for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto feature, so you have to connect it with the cord. And what's even more weird, they did not fix it with the over-the-air update yet. All right, back to the pros. The number two pro of the Ioniq 5 is its DC charging speed. 
it can fill up its battery from 10 to 80 percent in just 18 minutes which is one of the best in the industry it's even trumping tesla's fast dc charging speed at least for now moving on the number two con of the ionic 5 is that it's not very easy to uh, what do you call it um buy one they're not making them fast enough, and besides a longer wait time, it gives an opportunity to the dealerships to charge higher markups, which a lot of times exceed even the MSRP. Not cool, Hyundai. Not cool. All right, the Pro number three, and just like the Pro number two, this is what Hyundai does better than Tesla, simply because Tesla doesn't even have it at all. And it is the bi-directional charging. And no, it's not that time when the Ionic 5 experimented in college, all right? Ooh. Get your mind out of the gutter. I have a different channel for that. It is when an electric car can actually give its power back to either power appliances at a campsite or anywhere else, and in some cases, power parts of your house during a blackout. Or, as we used to call it in California back in the day, a Tuesday. The con number three is something that a lot of legacy manufacturers have a problem with, and it is a long wait between the over-the-air updates. Just in case you're not aware, most electric cars can get software updates, just like your smartphones. Most of the time, it makes the car better. More proactive car makers push those as often as every two weeks, but the Ionic 5 has only been getting one every six months on average. And now, as promised, as a bonus for this video, let me tell you a very cool thing about the Ionic 5. Because Hyundai Motor Group also owns Kia and Genesis, the Ionic 5 has a brother and a sister. And yes, I did pick their pronouns for them. In Kia EV6 and Genesis GV60, which are essentially the same car with a different shell and interior on top of it, I personally love the look of the GV60 and it is essentially the luxury version of the three. All right, now let's talk about Ionic 5's little sister, or maybe not so little. I'm talking about the Kia EV6. The Kia EV6 is Kia's third electric car in addition to the Kia Nero EV and the Kia Soul EV and has been on the road for a little over a year on pace to sell around 25,000 units in 2023. It has its share of trophies and awards including from the Motor Week, the Drive, Top Gear and the Best Cars of the Year. The EV6 starts at around $44,000 but it is not qualified for the $7,500 tax credit in the United States. Now let's get to the pros and cons and later in the video I will have a bonus pro for you that will surprisingly put the EV6 ahead of the Model Y in a very popular category. The pro number one is the range. The EV6 EPA range tops 300 miles, ranging from 232 to 310. Depending on the trim, only two other electric crossovers have a longer top range than the EV6, which are the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Tesla Model Y. That's pretty impressive. And now it is the time for the very first con of the EV6, and it is the complete lack of the home charging equipment, which pretty much all the EVs come with. You can't even get it as an option. That's right, if you want to charge your EV6 at home, where you should, uh, you're just gonna have to go somewhere else. Luckily, there are plenty of home chargers you can find everywhere else, including the big sites like Amazon. The Kia EV6 Pro number two and yet another important EV spec is the fast charging. The EV6 can charge at a max rate of up to 240 kilowatts, filling up its battery from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. In my age, that's how long it takes to find a bathroom. I get lost easily. And as a perk, every new EV6 driver gets 1000 kilowatt hours of free fast charging from Electrify America, which should be good for anywhere from 3500 to 4000 miles within the first three years. Let's get to the con number two, and this is the reason why the EV6 was the only car ever that I have given back to the manufacturer way before my seven day test drive was over while I was still back in the United States. Everything in this car is user unfriendly. 
from the almost a blank starting screen to a confusing uh, way to connect your phone or to run the interface. Uh, the climate and media controls are confusing and the charging port is in a bad location. And it's not just me. There are plenty of owners who have complained about those same things. The Pro number three is actually very cool. It is the V2L feature, which essentially means the car has electric outlets, which can power up whatever you want, including appliances like a fridge or even a TV set at your campsite or your home during a blackout. The car number three is EV6 very limited cargo space with only 50.2 cubic feet of it, which is in addition to a tiny 0.7 cubic feet frunk. My niece has a bigger lunchbox than that. <laughs> and now, as promised, the bonus pro, which is the fact that EV6 is the fastest electric crossover on the market when it comes to 0 to 60 acceleration at just 3.4 seconds, even beating out the Tesla Model Y performance version, which is impressive. All right, so the next one is a Toyota, and a lot of people uh, have been waiting for a Toyota electric vehicle. However, what they got uh, was not exactly what I think most of us expected from Toyota. This is Toyota's essentially first long-awaited EV launched in May of 2022, but did Toyota do enough to compete with the most popular EV in the world, the Tesla Model Y? Well, let's take a look. Now, usually this is the part of the video where I list the awards earned by the EV that I'm talking about. But this is the first time I'm reviewing a car that has none. Toyota also doesn't report individual model sales, so it's impossible to tell how well it is selling. So with that out of the way, let's get to the very first pro, which is the price. The BZ4X starts at around 43 grand, which makes it one of the most affordable electric crossovers on the US market, behind only the Hyundai Kona EV and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Volkswagen ID4 and the Kia Niro EV. Though it should be mentioned that the BZ4X is not qualified for the $7,500 US tax credit for now. Let's get to the first con and it is the second most important number behind the price for any EV and it is the range. The BZ4X's EPA range spans from 242 to 252 miles depending on the trim. Most of the popular electric crossovers however have the range way above 250 miles and many have now crossed the 300 mile mark. Now I should also mention that for some odd reason the BZ4X's European range numbers done in the WLTP standard vary drastically from country to country. For example, in Germany, it's listed at 514 kilometers, where in the UK, even the best option is only at 436. So the fun pro number two for the BZ4X is the fact that it is the friendliest EV I've ever seen if you have a pet. Look at all of these accessories and add-ons that you get for your dog or a cat or a pet snake if that's what you're into. Back to the cons, and the second con for the BZ4X is that it hardly has any driver assist features that we didn't have 20 years ago. Obviously, Tesla has the best one on the market with its autopilot that comes free, by the way, but many others also have something to offer. Ford's Blue Cruise, Nissan's Pro Pilot Assist 2.0, and GM's Super Cruise, to name a few. So someone tell Toyota that adaptive cruise control is no longer going to cut it. Switching back to the Pro column, the Pro number three is something that Toyota, much like many other large legacy automakers, have on younger or smaller companies like Tesla, Rivian, Polestar, Jaguar, etc. And it is an abundance of service centers. Just in the US, Toyota has about 2,500 of their own, plus thousands of independent shops 
all over the place. Now let's get to the con number three and it is a quite pathetic zero to 60 mile an hour time. The best number listed for the BZ4X is 6.5 seconds. Now two more random things to add about the car. One of them being the DC fast charging rate filling up the battery from 10 to 80 percent in about 30 minutes which also comes with a perk of a one year free unlimited charging at all EVgo charging locations. And lastly I gotta mention that even though the BZ4X has only one NHTSA recall it is the most embarrassing of them all. Toyota had to recall all of the units last year due to a danger of and I kid you not the wheels falling off. Nissan was one of the very first car makers to put out an electric car in the Nissan Leaf, but it took him over a decade to come up with a second one. So let's talk about the Nissan Aria. Now I know what you're thinking, hey Nissan, where the hell have you been for like a dozen of years since your very first electric car, the Nissan Leaf, back in 2010? That's before Tesla's first real electric car you must have been cooking something very delicious and this new Aria thingy must be really really amazing. Now before we even go to the pros and cons and you can judge for yourself I gotta say that I've done quite a few of these pros and cons videos and this set of pros and cons uh, for this particular AV is the closest that I've ever seen which on one hand means that there's nothing extremely exciting and nothing extremely devastating about this car but if you want a very normal electric crossover where you don't have to learn how to use a car again like with Tesla for example and you don't want to deal with a lot of problems you want a real Nissan you know what this one could just be the best choice for you the Aria has been on the market for not even a year yet they've sold over 10,000 of them which is nothing to write home about but it also means the production is ramping up it starts at around $45,000 caps out at 70 the best 0 to 60 which I still don't understand why people care about 0 to 60 of a crossover but nevertheless here it is 4.8 seconds the worst one is actually not that far off from that at 5.1 seconds okay let's get to the pro number one and it is the design. Now, I, this is a very good looking EV. Well, actually, it's a very good looking crossover EV or gas, inside or out. Lots of very futuristic, very slick lines, including a lot of interesting choices like these buttons that light up through the wooden trim. Uh, when I saw it for the first time in person in Madrid when I test drove it, I gotta tell you, I, I've never seen anything like this in any other prototype even, much less a production car. So I was very, very impressed. The only thing I gotta say is I wish they had more color choices. But as I visited Tokyo, Japan a couple of weeks ago, I, you know, everything is kind of a shade of gray over there. Somehow Japanese just do not like color. so. I, I, I can see how those color choices are not very exciting. But of course, you can wrap it and have it in any shade of green, yellow, or pink that you want. Then you know which one I'm going with. Okay, so the con number one is the fact that Aria does not qualify for the federal tax credit in the US at all. And that's $7,500. Now, of course, you as a buyer have to qualify. But once you do, then the car has to qualify. And this one doesn't. This is the pro number two and it is one year of unlimited free charging at any EVgo location in the United States. Now I know a lot of people don't even know what EVgo is but it is literally one of the largest public charging fast charging networks in the US. Of course all of the attention goes to the Tesla superchargers and a little bit goes to the Electrify America but EVgo chargers are everywhere. However a couple of things to keep in mind. One, a lot of these locations are limited to one or two stalls and about 50 kilowatts of max charging. They are upgrading these locations all the time, but nevertheless. Uh, however, like I mentioned, it is free. Now let's talk about the con number two, and it has to do also with fast charging because it's freaking slow. It maxes out at 130 kilowatts and it charges from 10 to 80 percent of the battery in up to 40 minutes. Now in comparison 
Kia, Hyundai, Genesis, Tesla, they all charge uh, the same percentage of their batteries in about half of that time. All right, back to the pros, and the pro number three is the range choices. I don't think I've seen or can think of an EV that has so many different choices of what range you can get in your trim. Now, the shortest range you can get is 205 EPA rated miles, and the best one is just a little over 300. So there are six different range options that you can get, and here's another interesting thing. You can get the best range, which is 304 miles, or the worst range of 205 miles for pretty much exactly the same price, which is just under $50,000. Now, before you even ask, obviously the one with the 205 mile range has almost everything else better than the one with the 304 mile range, including the performance. But my point is, you got choices, a lot of them. The con number three is the fact that Aria does not have a frunk. Now, if you don't know what the frunk is, it is the front trunk, the trunk and the frunk. When two words love each other very, very much, they have a little beep. Now, some people don't really care for the frunk, but it is the most secure place in the car, in any car, to keep your valuables. As a matter of fact, a lot of thieves don't even know that the frunk exists in really any car, but specifically in your car. So if you, let's say, live in Oakland, California, where I used to live before I moved to uh, Thailand, that is a very important thing. Yeah, that's my car. And it's actually one of three times that it happened while I lived in Oakland, California for what, less than a year? So great job, guys, for defunding the police in like the highest crime city in California. Thanks. The next one is the EV, which I did not expect to be this popular. So let's talk about the Polestar 2. Now, if you've never heard of Polestar, we can still be friends. But it was originally a race car mod brand, and when purchased by Volvo eight years ago, would simply enhance Volvo vehicles. But two years later, it became a standalone EV brand. The Polestar 2 is the brand's first all-electric car, already earning several awards from Auto Trader, in addition to being named the car of the year by Business Insider back in 2020. And ever since its first launch, it's been pretty popular. So far, over 100,000 Polestar 2s have found their homes, with almost 30,000 just in the first half of this year. Its best 0 to 60 time is 5.9 seconds. The max DC fast charging speed is 250 kilowatts, filling up the battery from 10 to 80% in about half an hour. With the basic specs out of the way, uh, let's get to the very first pro, and it's a big one. The Polestar 2 has one of the best EPA range numbers among all electric crossovers with 320 miles of range. It's only best tested by the Tesla Model Y at 330. But now here comes the con number one, and please, before I tell you what it is, remove your financial advisor from the room, because it is the price. The Polestar 2 starts at a little over 50 grand, which is definitely up there, and it is not qualified for the $7,500 tax credit in the United States. The only other electric crossovers with an even higher starting price are from Polestar's parent company Volvo, plus Mercedes-Benz, Genesis, and Jaguar. Back to the pros, and this one, this one can't really be measured with numbers like the rest of them, uh, kind of how I feel about the color pink. Much like its parent company Volvo, Polestar's build quality is one of the best out there and one of the reasons why, despite the high price, it has such respectable sales numbers for a new brand. The con number two is the fact that there are only 28 Polestar approved service centers in the US. So if you do have any issues, that may become a problem depending on your location. Even Tesla, that has had service center shortage for most of its existence, has over 200 of them in the US, while some of the bigger brands have over a thousand. The pro number three is the fact that Polestar 2's infotainment system does run 
on Google's Android Automotive OS, which means it's designed, maintained, and improved by one of the biggest software companies in the world, rather than something that each car brand has to create and maintain on their own. Obviously, Android phone users, which do outnumber iPhone users three to one in the world, will find this a much easier car to incorporate their phones into, including the Google Assistant, Google Maps, and a wider choice of voice commands, including Google Home remote operations. The con number three has to do with the car's frunk, the front trunk, which many electric cars have as a secure storage for their customer belongings. However, the Polestar 2 has a tiny frunk at only 1.4 cubic feet. For comparison, the Tesla Model Y's frunk is three times bigger. Polestar's parent company, Volvo, is right behind them with their version of an electric crossover, the C40 Recharge. And I gotta say, I really like the way this one looks. This is Volvo's third electric car besides its spin-off brand Polestar that also has its own EV, the Polestar 2. The Volvo C40 Recharge has been on the market for a couple of years now, and so far Volvo has sold over 45,000 of them. The C40 Recharge has earned the Newsweek Autos Editor's Pick Award and was IIHS's 2022 Top Safety Pick Plus which something that we would expect from Volvo. Now, the 2024 version is getting a major upgrade in some of the specs, so I will be talking about those as much as I have the information right now. The C40 Recharger's new 2024 EPA range spans from 226 to almost 300 miles, up significantly from the 2023 model. It can do 0 to 60 miles an hour launch in 4.5 seconds. Its DC fast charging max rate is at 200 kilowatts, filling up the battery from 10 to 80 percent in about half an hour, another improvement from 2023. It does come with a perk from Electrify America, giving all C40 recharge drivers 250 kilowatt hours of free charging within the first three years, which should equal to about 750 miles, but this could be taken away with the newer models. Now, let's move on to the pros and cons, and we're going to start with something very unique that Volvo is doing, which is a car subscription. That's right, just like with your Netflix bill, you pay one price monthly and you will get the car delivery, maintenance, tire, wheel, and excessive wear protection coverage, 24-7 roadside assistance, and even an insurance policy all in one. No down payment, you can give your car back or exchange it for another one at any time, but you do have to commit to each car for at least five months. Let's move on to the con number one, and your wallet is not gonna be happy to hear this one because it is the price. It starts in mid 50s and caps out in mid 60s, which is on the pricier side for the electric crossovers, and it is not qualified for the US tax credit. That makes it the second most expensive electric crossover in the US, behind only the Jaguar I-Pace at around 73 grand. Back to the pros, and this one can't really be measured with numbers, but it is very important to a lot of people. Volvo's build quality is one of the best out there, and that's actually one of many reasons why people pay top dollars to drive a Volvo. Con number two, and it is the tiny nine inch infotainment display. 10 years ago, it would not even be a thing to talk about, but most electric cars following Tesla's example, do feature a relatively large center display, usually at least 12 inches or above. The pro number three is the fact that C40 Recharger's infotainment system runs on Google's Android Automotive OS, which means it's designed, maintained, and improved by one of the biggest software companies in the world, rather than something that each brand has to create and maintain on their own. Obviously, it is an even better deal if you're an Android user rather than an iPhone user. The con number three could be a deal breaker for those who plan on hosting adult rear passengers on a regular basis. So listen up, Uber drivers. A common complaint about the C40 Recharge is that the sloped roof makes the rear seating feel cramped for adults. That is a side effect of making the back of the car look sexy. And last but not least, and I gotta tell you, this is 
my favorite. If I was to get a crossover, if I still lived in the United States, this would be this would be my choice. This is uh, the Genesis GV60. On a personal note, I think this is one of the best looking crossovers on the market today. And if I was still living in the US, I would probably get one. It's been on the road for less than two years, but has already gathered some awards, including ones from Car and Driver and IIHS. GV60's EPA range spans from 235 to almost 300 miles, and it's got a pretty impressive 0 to 60 at less than 4 seconds. But let's get to the pro number one, and this one is something that all electric cars have yet to equal the gas cars in, which is the fast charging. The Genesis GV60 is one of the best on the market with the max DC charging rate of 350 kilowatts, filling up the battery from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. It also comes with a great perk of three years of free charging at Electrify America, though each session is limited to 30 minutes. Now let's get to the con number one, and please hold your wallets closed because it is the price. The Genesis GV60 starts into the 50s, which means it is second most expensive electric crossover currently on the market after only the Mercedes-Benz EQB at only $700 more. And on the top of that, it is not qualified for the $7,500 tax credit in the United States. Back to the pros, and the pro number two is very cool because it is the V2L technology that allows GV60 drivers to plug their appliances right into the car. Whether you're camping and you want to watch some TV or you don't want your ice cream to go bad in your fridge during a blackout. Con number two is kind of stuck in 2015 when automakers would produce compliance EVs. And even though the GV60 is not one, it surely is acting like it, as it is only being sold in less than half of the states in the US. Granted, the other half are not exactly the states going crazy for EVs, uh, but still. Back to the pros again, and the pro number three is really cool because the GV60 has biometrics built into the car. It recognizes the driver's face to unlock the car and load personalized profile, including adjusting the head-up display, the seats, the steering wheel, the mirrors, and the infotainment settings. And then you can use your fingerprint to authorize in-car payments and even start it without a key. That, my friends, is the future. The con number three is something that many car reviewers have noticed, and it is the fact uh, that the quality of the interior does not really reflect the luxurious image and certainly the price of the car. Now, did the same reviewers say the same thing about the Model Y? Well, <laughs> That's a whole different set of videos that I have already made on this channel. Now, as I promised, here's a fun fact about the GV60. You see, Genesis is the luxury vehicle division of Hyundai Motor Company, and Hyundai also owns Kia. So the GV60 has two siblings that are essentially the same EV with two other shells on top of it the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. All right, so these are the most popular ones. However, let me know in the comment section if you like any of them or maybe you like one of many others that are on the market or coming to the market this and next year. Man, I am so excited that we're even talking about all of these choices because only a few years ago, none of this really existed. So, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember, to stay charged.